What's up guys, thanks for watching as always. Uh, today we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, we're not making a lure this time, but we're actually making a lure dryer. Something that I should have done a long time ago. Uh, but we're getting onto it right now. Um, reason why I'm building one is because it's a much better way of letting the epoxy coat harden on your lure. Uh, you, you have to use a lot less epoxy because uh, with the hand drying process, you lose a lot of epoxy because it just drips off. Uh, but when it rotates, it obviously um, evens out properly and you don't need as much epoxy. So, um, what we bought is a um, mirror ball or disco ball motor. It's a rotator tool that, uh, yeah, you know, your, your old disco ball. Um, you can buy those separately. These only went $9 a piece. I bought two of them because I, I am planning on uh, building two dryers. Uh, makes it handy. I can kind of epoxy two lures in one go. Um, I got these from guitarcenter.com, I believe. Yeah, Guitar Center. Uh, again, $9 a piece. Shipping was very little. And uh, these are 6 RPM. So it'll rotate six times per minute, which is one rotation every 10 seconds. Might be a little bit fast, might be a little bit slow. I don't know. I have no idea, but we're going to find out. Uh, it sounds about right. I've already tried it out, uh, plugged it in, turned it on, and um, it seems like the rotation is going to be fine for that. So uh, I'm going to have a little plan drawing out and uh, writing everything down how we're going to do it. I picked up some wood from uh, Home Depot for free. I mean, you can see it's severely damaged. Nobody was going to pick this piece up anyway, uh, but I can saw out uh, whatever I need out of it. So it's going to uh, save me some coin as well. We want to do it as cheap as possible and I still have a decent drying rate. So uh, let's get going. All right, so first of all, we've got this little chain that we have to take off the rotator, the motor. Uh, it's got a little pin with a gap in it in which the uh, the big split rings and the chain are attached. That will be used for hanging the um, mirror ball up, but we're obviously not going to use that. So we're going to take that off. Uh, we're going to write a couple of um, numbers down. We want to get the width of the um, motor um, so we can determine how wide of a um, piece of wood we need to um, attach it. So we're just going to do some uh, numbers here. Now this one will be actually be used mainly for stick baits and uh, that will be about as long of a stick bait as I'll be making. I will have to compensate a little bit for uh, the thickness of the motor so uh, I'm going a couple of inches over so we're using a 15 inch long plank as a, a bottom uh, plank and um, so we got the width here then we got the length and then we got the connection plate which obviously has to be the same or at least similar to uh, the plank that we use for uh, attaching the rotator um, I'm just drawing it out here for myself, so it makes it a little makes a little bit more sense. Um, but yeah, that all looks good, so we can get going. Now this wood is uh, pretty poor wood. Not only was it severely damaged, but it's pretty bad quality. It's really cheap, but I was happy enough to get it for free. And our goal for this uh, video, but not only for the project, was um, to get it done as cheap as possible. So the motor was about nine dollars. And getting the wood for free uh, obviously helps. Obviously, it's not too bad of an idea to maybe spend some uh, money on it and actually get some good pieces of wood, but I never pass up any free wood that I can use, so uh, this time we'll be using that. So, um, here I'm just determining the, the width. Uh, I want to get rid of the rough edges as much as possible. Um, but I also don't want to cut too much off because otherwise we can't fix a motor on it. So uh, yeah, just doing a bit of uh, measuring out. I also want to compensate for the bottom plank uh, so that we can um, screw it in place. The thickness was about uh, a centimeter, so well about half an inch thick. Um, so I uh, obviously marked off half an inch on the top plank. This looks way more complicated than it is, and this video perhaps uh, goes into depth way more than it needs to. But at least you uh, will let be left with um, 
uh, a minimal amount of questions after this, so I hope it helps. We're just measuring out uh, what the perfect spot for the motor is. Obviously you want to leave some space under there because if you make a really bulky lure and it rotates the the bottom the belly hook hanger might actually hit the bottom of the um, uh, rotator. So taking all of that into account um, is the best thing you can do. I made a couple of errors in the process but it's easy enough to fix and I'm also kind of happy that I bought two motors so that um, I can perhaps build a different type of model um, after this. This one will be suited for um, large stick baits but I'll also make uh, an adjustment to use it for uh, smaller lures as well um, whereas the other one is going to be used for really really big lures I'm going to make that one a lot longer we'll see how it all goes anyway that's the first blank marked off um, we can just saw um, the shape out take off the rough edges um, now I do have a little bit of um, a tool that I can uh, set up onto the um, bandsaw to make straight line cuts. Uh, I couldn't find it and it didn't really matter if it was straight line or not. As long as I got the, the length right, it didn't really matter if the edges were a little bit wobbly. So pretty simple. Here I'm just getting rid of the... Um, sharp edges and also uh, doing a little bit of sanding to uh, make sure that I won't get uh, about a dozen splinters in my hand in the process because it was very uh, brittle wood and a lot of points were sticking out so a bit of damage control right there Cool. All right. Now we obviously need a uh, bottom piece as well. That one's going to be 15 inches long. In hindsight, I should have made it a little bit longer. It's better to make it too long than too short, because um, you can only uh, fit a, fit small lures in too too short of a uh, uh, setup. So uh, obviously, uh, in hindsight, I would advise if you're going to make big stick baits probably want to aim between 18 and 20 inches you can always make uh, like some sort of a connection to uh, make the stick bait fit um, if it's going to be used for bass lures like swim baits like big swim baits wouldn't even to be too bad of an idea to um, make it a, a similar length um, crank baits and stuff you can make it much smaller but it's whatever you prefer I'd rather have some working space in there as well so I don't mind the uh, extra bit of distance. Now you can see there's still a couple of rough edges there so um, we'll get rid of that um, and we want to determine the, the positioning of the uh, plank that connects to the motor we want to have that uh, pretty well centered. Actually in hindsight it doesn't matter all that much if it's centered or not as long as you get the, um, the center of the motor and the uh, connection point on the other plank aligned so that your lure hangs straight. The same height is probably the most important part. Um, but yeah, I kind of realized later on that it's going to be working out uh, a lot better regardless anyway. It's pretty hard to mess up. So here we're just making a copy of our um, connection plank. We obviously want to have two pieces on each side like so, saw that out and get it connected. Now you see that I marked uh, on the top there it says top and you can't probably see it now but on the bottom it said uh, bot. Um, there was a bit of a curve in the wood and I didn't want it to be unstable um, so the curve is facing up so it doesn't, uh, so it leans on both sides. Makes it, makes it much more stable than uh, um, having the other side on top, would make it a lot more wobbly. So we determined where the screws have to go in and we've determined where the connection part of the plate is. Um, I've drilled two holes for the screws in there 
Now we're just going to indicate in, on the wood where uh, the screws have to go in. Now I re later realized that it's much more convenient to actually have a thick piece of wire that runs through the wood. Um, I uh, cut uh, two pieces of two millimeter galvanized wire, uh, jammed it in there, it was a lot more sturdy, held the plank up straight. Um, obviously you see we've, we've got a very thin connection point and on top of that the wood's a uh, little bit flimsy, not very strong, so I had to make a couple of adjustments but we got it done eventually. So here's the two gaps that I drilled in with the Dremel tool. I actually used a, uh, a blunted drilling tool, uh, blunted on purpose so that it wouldn't split the wood. Um, and here's my uh, fabulous hammer and tape measure, they're actually my wife's. Yes, there's that old saying that says the only way to do um, accurate carpentry is uh, to look good while you do it. Not really, but it's the only thing we have on hand at the moment. My uh, other tools are overseas. We'll just have to do with that. So a little carpentry trick. Um, if you've got wood that might split on you, make sure that you blunt the nails. Uh, that prevents the wood from splitting. It actually... Um, moves the wood out of the way instead of splitting it apart um, so yeah that prevented the wood from splitting um, I nailed those in and then I um, used a two millimeter uh, galvanized uh, steel wire to uh, actually secure it in place much much better the nails held up for then but uh It'll have to do. We obviously don't want those planks to move around a whole lot simply because if there's some tension on the lure, which there will be, especially with the bigger lures, we don't want that move to uh, move around, be all flimsy. So um, we also use some um, permanent, uh, sorry, um, super glue to get that all in place. You can see that here. Fill up the gaps, makes it super sturdy. Don't be afraid to give it a good pull because uh, if it's able to withstand a bit of force then you know that it's going to be able to uh, hold up in the process of using it. And that's exactly what we need. So let that super glue seep into the edge there. We use a bit of sawdust to give that part some strength. And we repeat the process a couple of times so that we got a nice edge build up there. And, uh, I gave it a good yank but wasn't able to move it around so it's very sturdy it's exactly what we need alrighty now the bottom side same story fill her up with super glue and sawdust over it. That holds up really, really well. It hardens up really well, fills in the gaps, and it holds the two pieces together really well. Super strong. Now I know we use a couple of different tools here in the process, but Overall, we had it lying around at home and uh, made it pretty cheap. Here we've already got the uh, motor screwed in place into the uh, gaps that we predetermined. Um, and now we're just trying to find out what the, what the center point is. Um, I don't do any exact measurements, but I do want to get a rough estimate of where it needs to be. Um, as I said, height of the connection point is probably more important than uh, um, the width of the connection point. Uh, simply because if your lure is on too much of an angle, all the epoxy will drip onto one side. Uh, so we want to get that as straight as possible. Here we're just drilling the connection point real quick. Um, I was trying to figure out what would be a good connection. Um, I'm using some wire here. Uh, this one actually didn't work too well. I thought I had it right, but um, I later figured out that what you need in a, a good connection hanger 
is that it doesn't wiggle on the connection point of the, the motor or on that one uh, on the one of the lure because the moment they can wiggle around it'll um, uh, prevent it at certain points um, from spinning and then it will spin really fast on other points so it doesn't really do a lot of equal distribution you'll see that in the video shortly but here you get an idea of uh, how the lure will be hanging now as a connection point it obviously has to rotate i found this which is uh, an old lanyard that we don't use anymore and it's got a little swivel on there with a with a hook uh, and that's very handy to use uh, it's actually perfect for what we needed and so we uh, kind of tried to figure out the width of it all um, Obviously, I already had the height indicated, and it kind of made the um, connection hole irrelevant because I had to drill two separate holes on the side. Uh, we just fixed it in with two pieces of wire that I had in my uh, well leftover lure making box. I collect all sorts of stuff in there that I don't use at the time. There's some big GT trebles in there because I didn't have a quick place to store them anywhere else. But uh, usually I find a couple of pieces of wire in there that I can use for uh, well purposes like this. Cool, now you get an idea what I was going at. So you're going to drill two small holes so we can jam that wire in there. That will hold the um, swivel and the hook, the swivel hook I guess, um, in place. In terms of attachment wise for the lure, um, you obviously want some tension on there to keep it straight. Uh, rubber bands are the easiest thing to get your hands onto. They uh, make life pretty easy. And uh, yeah, and sometimes uh, adjusting the wire um, helps it uh, t tighten on the lure and helps the lure sit straight after you've already attached it. Uh, probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense what I'm saying right now, but once you see it in the process, you'll see what I mean. There we go. That's it fixed in place. Now we just got a rubber band so we can connect it. So, after fiddling around a little bit with the rubber band, um, I was able to connect it. Now it wasn't working perfectly at this point because the wire hanger at the front uh, that connects the lure to the uh, motor um, wasn't uh, designed the right way, had a bit of a wobble in it, you'll see it in a bit. The lure won't actually spin consistently, it rotates like um, with a delay and with a um, sped up moment as well, so it, it doesn't... Um, it transitions from slow to fast too much, it wobbles too much. Um, yeah, you'll see what I mean when I turn it on here. And uh, that was no good, so I had to redo the wire. But after that was done, that was easy enough. So here it rotates fine, and then it flips over. It goes slower and accelerates again. So it's not what we want. So here we actually got the wire fixed up properly. We don't actually use any. Um, rubber bands on this one because the wire was actually tightened while the lure was already connected and that was perfect as you can see it rotates perfectly here very happy it's a matter of kind of figuring it out how you want to use it that one works really well and for the smaller lures um, we use the same connection point I've got a stabilizer in the middle just a bit of wire uh, bent and connected through two holes and um, that works for the smaller lures perfectly so pretty happy with that so if you have any questions guys uh, please let me know i built this uh, lure rotator for around ten dollars which is really really cheap very happy and uh, yeah i hope that that helped a lot in case you were wanting to build one yourself as well well thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned cheers